the ABS Grand Tournament. Uh, this is game three of today's evening. So RDU versus Powder, Nihilum versus Manalite. I'm not sure, but this might be the first appearance in a broadcaster tournament when it comes to this game uh, to this team. Yeah, it's quite possible. Um, they did spring up very recently. I know they were in the process mm -hmm. of negotiating with players when we were at the last Gfinity event, Lothar. Um, they mm -hmm. ended up picking up Powder, who was looking for a team after uh, departing from Trig. Yeah. Um, as well as picking up, uh, yeah, as well as picking up uh, Modern Leper, who is one of the strongest players in the UK. It's a guy that I'm very familiar with, who uh, is definitely a very high-level player that's been deserving of a good team for uh, for a while. So happy, mm -hmm. to see, happy to see him doing well. But yeah, he's up against RDU, and if we're talking about teams, dare we say Nihilum, the biggest team in Hearthstone right now? I mean, you guys are pretty much killing it in everything you enter. So, well, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> I just if you wanna if you wanna go off. Lothar, if you want to brag no, no, a little not... bit, I was just giving you the opportunity to do so. so. Uh, I will just be humble bundle here and okay. just, you know, <laughs> not, not say that much about the team. But yeah, we're pretty happy what uh, how it goes with our team. Uh, by the way, are you sporting a uh, one of the Musketeers image today? So <laughs> 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 yeah, D'Artagnan will be against Powder today, and um, both uh, lineups. There is one warrior lacking. Interesting. Ardu will be playing Paladin, Druid, and Warrior. Powder will be sporting a Mage Priest Hunter deck list. Uh, so no Warrior from Powder. No Worth warrior. noting. And another Priest. So every single lineup so far will have featured. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, every single game, at least one player will have brought Priest, um, which is pretty interesting. Not a deck that I was expecting to be one of the the standouts, but definitely seems to be a list a lot of people are favoring. Uh, seems surprising to bring Priest after you've just seen. Uh, very high-profile tournaments with the BlizzCon qualifiers where everyone was playing Handlock. Yeah, and then and the... suddenly you're just deciding to bring Priest into a tournament very shortly afterwards. So Yeah, uh, I would say that maybe even a Control Priest has a bigger chance against Handlocks mm -hmm. than the Dragon Priest. Dragon Priest because Dragon yeah. Priest relies on minions, mm -hmm. which are not necessarily better than Handlock's minion. Right. And um, it's basically like playing Druid against Handlock, but you lack the, the burst damage. Yeah. And that's what seals the deal for Druid against Handlocks. Mm -hmm. So running a Dragon Priest is not ideal in current meta game, but at the same time, we are not we didn't see a single Handlock yet. We did not, know. So it looks like these people who are bringing Priest have actually done a, a better job reading the meta than maybe someone like Firebat, who's classically very, very good at reading the meta and bringing strong lineups because we have to assume that double BGH Shaman list was aimed at Handlock, right? And we've so far seen six lineups without a single Handlock in them. So. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, Firebat won. So. Yeah, sure. I mean, double BGH Shaman pulled it out against Priest in the end, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't necessarily make his decision to bring it right. Yeah, um, I'm just checking the bracket on abusgaming.com and uh, let me see. Um, Firebat will be playing against winner between Norger and Cypher. So this is... This is something that we have to point out. When we will be seeing the Roger versus Cypher game, we have to see, uh, we have to note if someone is playing Handlock. There. Sure. Because if he is playing Handlock, he will be definitely not favored mm -hmm. in the uh, round of eight, uh, in the uh, basically in the quarterfinals, right? Yeah. Against Firebat, and Firebat will be looking really great into the semifinals. I mean, with the chances of him getting into the semifinals. At the same time, uh, for now, let's focus on the game at hand. So RDO versus Powder. Powder come in with the Freeze Mage here, which is no great surprise to me. Uh, if we had a little bit more time there in the intros, I was going to uh, suggest that the Mage might be a Freeze Mage from Powder. It's a deck that he very, very consistently brings to tournaments. Um, he's a very he's very strong with, and we see that he's teched in double uh, Explosive Sheep. And actually, the Echo of Medivh starts to suggest that we might actually be playing Giant's Mage okay. here. Okay, that, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. And this is a deck that is not really... Um, into it so many plays that you do mm -hmm. are not exactly the best options that turn but they uh, they have a long-term plan right and actually what am i talking about he had the molten giant in his hand the whole time and i just said it was freeze mage because i'm a moron <laughs> like, this is this is <laughs> this is obviously echo mage right. and now he has second echo of medivh already in the hand yeah um, so we do see the uh, the Wombo combo ready to go uh, to make a, a million giants. Druid, definitely a deck that can't deal with that. So it's a, a thing that, um, you know, some decks, you know, your win condition with this deck isn't necessarily making a million um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, molten Giants, because they can just die to a board clear like Light Bomb or, you know, Molten Giant Shadow Flame from a Handlock or something like that. But if you can get a lot of Molten Giants and be safe behind an, an Ice Block against a Druid, then you're in a really uh, strong position. And I love the play here. I just wanted to ask if you approved the double explosive sheet. I because absolutely love this play. The only problem is a single keeper, right? Yep. I mean, but how else are you going to deal with those shades, right? You have no AOE. Well, you have you Doomsayer, have... right? You have Doomsayer, but you have no AOE. You don't have is... a over insight. But it is Echo um, Mage playing Freeze uh, Frost Novas? He's, yeah, he's playing Frost Novas. He plays Frost, Novas, right? Frost Nova Doomsayer. Um, it often doesn't run Blizzard. That's the AOE that they cut most of the time, and it has the Flame Strikes as well. Uh, that's usually how it's built, um, and when I when I say usually, that's pretty much how Neville's builds it, right? Because like, <laughs> who, who else plays Echo Mage? My my casting of this game is going to be purely based on having watched Neville's stream. So, shouts to him for mm -hmm. giving me the tools I need to actually say maybe some relevant things during this game. Sorry for a second, just replying to production. Um, yeah, but um, generally this matchup will be heavily defined by those Shadow Next Runners, right? Yeah, and that's why I do love the play to go for the double sheep and just to get the answer. Because um, like we said, there was there was just nothing nothing strong in hand. And even if they got silenced, he had the double echo in his hand, which we saw him follow up with. And now all of a sudden he just has two more explosive sheeps. Mm -hmm. We do again now see there's a bit of a cat and mouse game going on here because we see another Keeper of the Grove from RDU that he mm -hmm, can choose mm -hmm. to silence the other sheep. And then we're back in the situation where uh, where Powder doesn't have enough AoE from sheeps to clear the... Uh, from sheeps? From sheep. The plural of sheep is sheep. It is sheep, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're uh, the native speaker here, but yeah. I think it's sheep. It is sheep. Uh, I think you, you, you want to pop the sheep right now. Do you? Because then you just lose your board next turn to the double explosive sheep that you know your opponent has. Because the oh, Echo yeah, Buster. Right. It's 6 10 6 Yeah. Oh. So would you want to silence the explosive sheep then? It's interesting. He's gonna go for silencing the mad scientist instead. Wow, he will lose the whole board. That's a really good point. Why? That was uh, not entirely well thought by Adu, I think. Now he goes face. I mean, I guess maybe he's okay with this. Like he spends his entire turn six doing explosive sheep, explosive sheep, ping, and then he just slams Emperor and says, "What are you gonna do about this?" Yeah, and you have Double Force of Nature and the Savage Roar in hand. Right. Yeah, so actually, looking at it long term, I think this play is actually really, really strong from RDU, because what he did that turn was silence the Mad Scientist to deny the Ice Block. Mm -hmm. So now, like, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, he's just threatening lethal. So actually, I think when we look at it in detail, that's actually just a really strong play. And one of the things I do know about Echo Mage is that it does struggle sometimes to deal with Emperor. There just isn't a clean answer in the deck for it. There's no Fireballs. Uh, you do play polymorphs, but you don't always draw them, and often you're looking to polymorph other things. Like, if you polymorph an Emperor and suddenly you don't have an answer for a Sylvanas or a Ysera or something like that. Um, so yeah, RDU actually really, really playing well here. It's a, it's a really, really strong play. Good job, RDU. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously better than us here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, RDU is me, because I wouldn't done that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I saw that play. I, I, I saw what he was doing after he did it, but I certainly would have been too fixated on protecting my board there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, congratulations to RDU because that is a fantastic play. But the second Mad Scientist does put him in some trouble here because um, the play we saw the turn before with silencing the Mad Scientist, this is what it was trying to prevent. He doesn't want to see an ice barrier or an ice block come down here. You know, yeah, Asper is a, like a lesser problem right because right. it doesn't necessarily play into molten giant yeah but ice block is something you don't want to see at all yeah because if you go for the lethal uh play to break the ice then you basically allow your opponent to play the molten giant go into echo Medivh, and yeah that's really sad okay so he wild growth his entire combo will cost nine next turn yeah okay so the wild growth makes perfect sense there ramps himself up to nine mana Oh, that's fantastic. He draws the uh, duplicate and uh, actually had a secret equipped as well, which I didn't notice when he played that. Um, glossed over that at some point. But drawing the duplicate here is really good because it guarantees pulling an, uh, another relevant secret off the Mad Scientist if he's playing uh, Ice Barriers as well, which isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, actually not sure, seems, yeah. I'm actually not sure what that uh, secret is that he has equipped right now. But... I'm not sure also. also. Okay, so yeah. it, it is Ice Block, and he's only playing Ice Block and Duplicate in his deck. Yes. That's, that's for sure now. 
there was no reason to play Effigy, right, in, uh, in this type of no, deck. No, people people theorized when it first came out that maybe Effigy would be good, but um, I think the only TGT card that's made its way into this deck is possibly one copy of Frost Giant, because uh, it gives you an, an answer to decks that try and fatigue you. Sometimes if, if people know they're playing against Molten's Mage, they will just never attack and just send the game to fatigue. And then Frost Giant gives you a win condition that you can activate yourself without having your health lowered. Um, so yeah, one Frost Giant is occasionally used, but generally no effigies. Mm -hmm. And I will see just a Molten Giant with an Echo of Medivh, most likely. Yep. Uh, oh no, a Duplicate. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, Duplicate yeah, is, it makes a lot more sense here, because he gets himself two Moltens, and then he can uh, use the Echo of Medivh on the two Moltens that he gets if... Uh, if RDU chooses to, to to trade with it, which I'm almost certain is not a thing that's happening. Hmm. So you can break the ice here. You already saw one uh, one molten giant, and you know you probably won't kill that anyway. Yeah, and the the only concern here is how low can you get him before you pop? You can get him to two, which is fine, because yeah. then. As long as you can get him down below five, then you know you have Swipe as a clean follow-up next turn, even if he gets the dream turn next turn with a with a million Molten Giants and Sun Furies. Um, but we do see the Heal Bot in, uh, in Powder's hand, which is going to enable a pretty powerful turn for him next turn. Mm -hmm, because he can play Heal Bot and then Echo Medivh and still have Molten Giant for zero mana. Yep. Um, but the question is, is that going to be enough? Because we do see another 10 damage uh, coming straight back at him with the second force of nature and the swipe. And there's still a pilot shredder. And there's still so a pilot shredder on the board. A so. lot of that. Mm -hmm. hmm. So he is going to need better answers than this. Uh, second heal bot is actually oh. the only play that keeps him alive right now, right? Yeah, but he has to kill one of the minions, and then he will not get... He will be out of Moltens, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for now, because he, st he still has one in his deck, right. and... By the way, he will be at 18. There's 10 damage in the hand, mm -hmm. so that's not enough to kill him, mm -hmm. but will probably rather will not trade in any of those uh, heal bots, because he, he knows that it's duplicate. Hmm. Oh, Ooh. never mind. Well, never mind. Yeah, that was okay. uh, that was a lot of analysis that was quickly made irrelevant by a top deck savage draw, as Druid quite often does. So there we go. Um, pretty pretty well played there from from RDU overall. The uh, the play to sacrifice his own board for the benefit of uh, getting an unanswered emperor on the board definitely mm -hmm. turned out to win in the game because all that cheap burst that he ended up in his hand there just turned out to be so important. He was able to force of nature, savage raw, and play a shredder in the same turn last turn, and that was just all because of the uh, the double discount from the emperor. So, Definitely. really, really well played from RDU. Excellent showing for the first game. I mean, he had some luck with the last draw, but that doesn't necessarily say that he won by luck. Right. I mean, the, the decision was really tough to make that sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the same time, he top decked Savage Raw, but the turn before Powder top decked the second Heal Bot, which was the only card in his deck apart from second Ice Block that kept him alive. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, they pretty much broke even on those two draws. And what really decided the game was the the strong play with the explosive sheet from RDU. So, really well played from him. I was wondering about the uh, first Echo of Medivh on the explosive ships. I mean, that was like a good play to deal with the... Now you had to do it. Actually. Yeah, I think he had to do it, for sure. He had to do it, yeah. um, And here we go. This is the exact reason that you bring this deck to a tournament. This mm -hmm. is the absolute worst matchup in the game for Patron Warrior. People say Hamlock is bad. It's nothing compared to how badly destroyed this deck gets by yep. Echo Mage. And it's very interesting because it's basically almost the same mm -hmm. as Freeze Mage, right? Almost the same, but there's oh, one card that makes a big difference here. Yeah. And it's Molten Giant. Molten Giant. Yep. Yep. And the thing is that it's not like... Um, normally, you know, if you play a deck that just tries to stall and then plays big threats, like... Big deal, I have two executes in my deck. Two executes don't do a great deal against like seven Molten Giants. <laughs> I just wanted to say eight, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> seven sounds right too. 
Um, so yeah, this is a really, really tough match. Um, Powder, uh, sorry, RDU is, does have the knowledge. He did see enough cards. He saw a Molten Giant last game, so he knows this isn't Freeze Mage, and this is, in fact, uh, Molten's Mage. So he knows that the, the hold your armor smiths and just gain a million armor strategy is not how you win this game. Mm -hmm. I've seen people try and fatigue um, Echo Mage with Patron, and generally that doesn't work out too often. Um, yeah, it's just... Generally, this is just a pretty miserable matchup, and uh, yeah, people people talk a lot about you know Handlock being really favoured. I think Handlock is only something like fifty five percent to sixty percent favoured. Um, I love those percentages. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, Echo Mage just absolutely shuts it down, and we see so many key cards like Frost Nova, you know, Emperor Thorasan to make everything cheaper. The Ice Block mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. is an absolute nightmare because. Uh, Patron Warrior is just so highly tuned to killing you once. That's just what the whole game. That's what the whole deck is built to do. That when you, when you ask them to kill you twice or maybe three times through ice blocks, it suddenly just starts to become a really big deal because they only play two Warsong Commanders in their deck. So if they have to kill you three <laughs> times, they're gonna have a bad time. Yep. I mean, unless you save a weapon for the final stroke. Right, but you still have heal bots, right? To yeah, get yourself course. out of range of yeah. I mean, all right, let's I mean, stop, as you let's, said, let's it's stop like... talking about how miserable the matchup is. Because yeah. it really is. Um, really is, and now we'll just see. I mean, Adil probably knows how the matchup bad is, so mm -hmm. he will try to deal as much damage as soon as possible just to play around those Molten Giants if they're not in the hand. Because if you wait longer, there will be yeah, like a higher chance of those being in the hand, right? There are basically two strategies you can take. You can go for the Fatigue strategy, um, and try and burst them the turn before they draw the fatigue card that kills them, and that way you bypass ice block. That does sometimes work, um, but in the meantime, they can just get way too much value out of like duplicating Belchers or duplicating Emperor Thorasan and stuff like that, um, which is mm -hmm. very, very different to what to what Freeze Mage can do. Uh, or you can just try and rush them down and hope they draw badly, and I think that is the correct way to play the matchup. Generally, if you have a bad matchup. Um, you need to take risks, just play as risky as possible and just try and get it over with. Um, so I think the correct way to play this matchup as the Patron Warrior is just to, to try and push yourself all in as, as early as possible and just hope that they don't have enough Moltens and Echoes and some Furies to, to shut the game down. True. I mean, I mean, I have nothing to add here. Like, spot on. You know, you not played a great deal of this matchup, though. <laughs> no, it's not that, um, that common on ladder, right? Right, yeah. When do you when do you see Echo Mage being dominant in ladder? Mm. I mean, there was one point when it was when it was new, and everyone was like, "Okay, let's try this deck, right?" Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's basically it. Yeah. And now it's pretty much just Nevs and people that watch Nevs' stream. That's that's basically all the the the, the uh, Giants Mage players in the world. Um, interesting. RDU is going for the Dread Corsair build. Um, Obviously, six O right now is number one on uh, both EU and NA servers with a with a patron build that has Dread Corsair in it. It was a card that disappeared for a very long time from the deck in favor of things like Shield Block, but uh, starting to creep its way back in again just because of uh, how good it is in matchups when you're looking for tempo, uh, like against things like Druid and Midrange Hunter, where you really want to fight for a board. It's just a fantastic card to have in your deck as a zero mana three three. Mm -hmm. At the same time, patron is really powerful. Uh Either way, if you play Shield Block, Shield Slam, if you play um, Dread Corsair, the deck is still, still really powerful. That makes a small difference. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, maybe in, in, let's say, Hunter matchup, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. But apart, apart from that, I think it's like really marginal. Uh, it's really <laughs> it's also funny that the first, um, first versions of Patron mm -hmm. weren't even playing Unstable Goals. Right. Yeah, I remember that as well. The very first version is still messing around with like having one Raging Worgen still in the deck as well and crazy yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, the list has come a long way. We do see an Emperor coming down here and hitting a pretty high value Emperor hand. It's missing out the, uh, the Warsong Commander, but as I mentioned in a previous patron game, he's in the position where as soon as he draws the Warsong Commander, he can afford to play the rest of his hand with it for 10 mana, or at least enough of it to do ludicrous amounts of damage. Um, and that's generally your measuring stick for when it's time to play Emperor. So definitely agree with the Emperor play this turn. Puts a lot of pressure on. And as I mentioned before, Echo Mage does have a, a bit of an issue dealing with this. Because look at his hand. Eight yeah. cards and none of them kill Emperor Thorasan. Now this is really miserable. But at the same time, if Emperor Thorasan hits twice, there's a difference it will be hitting it three times. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's almost no difference. Right. Everything will be for one or zero mana. Yeah. So you will be playing that from your everything from your hand anyway. But in this matchup, it's not necessarily that bad. Because, you know, you have Ice Block up and mm -hmm. he won't kill you. Then you just clear uh, with a Flame Strike or whatever. RDU goes for the uh, skip of the attack there, which is totally fine because he'll be able to burst him at 25 anyway. Um, but is lowering him to 20 particularly relevant? I guess it is. Right, you'd rather no Moltens than 10 mana Moltens, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I yeah, think, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. perfectly I agree, right. I agree. So he goes for the Fatigue line. Oh, I, I don't think he's necessarily going for the Fatigue line. It's just he can deal 25 damage now anyway, as soon as he draws Warsong Commander. He doesn't need him to be at 20. He can do 25 from his hand quite easily. Um, so just for now, just lock out the option of Molten Giants. Like, the difference between 20 and 25 is basically nothing for him. And looks like... Uh, I'm very interested in the fact that Powder chose to immediately ping that turn, because that suggests to me that there is a Frost Giant in the deck. And he was like, okay, if he's going to not attack and try and fatigue me, then I need to... Um... Are you sure of that? I mean... I think it's possible. I think it's very possible. So, what, like, one Frost, frost one, Giant? One Frost Giant, yeah. I think it's very, very possible it's in the deck. Just just because he did the ping so immediately, and just it was the first thing on his mind, it's like, okay, he chose not to attack Nick last turn, so he might be going for the fatigue strategy, so I need to start pinging every turn for when I draw my Frost Giant. Um, the problem with the Frost Giant is the fact that uh, when you Echo of Medivh, that's Frost Giant, mm -hmm. it's then 12 mana, right? No, because it's no, it, it counts as to how many you have done throughout the oh, entire yeah, game. Oh yeah, yeah, right. It, they cost the same amount as the first one every time. I thought he has to be in the deck to get the discount. I don't think so. No. I mean, that, I have never seen that in, uh, happening. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've definitely seen Nevs playing with one Frost Giant. I'm just trying to recall the exact interaction. But, uh, I'm pretty sure they cost the same as the first one after you echo them. And now, uh, hmm, Sylvanas is not bad. Sylvanas is decent. Um, he has played his Emperor. He may have been, uh, he took a long turn to, to decide to play the Emperor that turn. He may have been waiting for the, the duplicate to come out of his deck and try and duplicate Emperor and start to get a lot of value that way, but decided just to get the, the value in his hand right now. Mm -hmm. So he would probably drop the Armor Smith next turn just to go long cards because mm -hmm. he will be hitting 10 soon. All right, hmm. Polymorph not particularly useful, and again, just you know, choosing to ping down a two-one over two turns. Um, again, I mean, the hero power was obvious that turn, but again, you can just see him hero powering and then stopping to think about what he's going to do with the rest of his turn. So, if I was a betting man, I'd put money on there being one frost giant in this deck. I'm really curious to see that. Mm -hmm. Temple yeah. Big Game Hunter makes sense because the only target against patrons is a Gromash, which no one sports now, mm -hmm. and uh, Frothing Berserkers, which usually will be cleared by a single ping <laughs> after their turn. Right, I mean, you have so much AoE in your deck that you can either deal with the low health Frothing anyway, or you're just dead. Like, yeah. you're, you're not going to mm -hmm, need mm -hmm. to Big Game Hunter it. So. Yep. True. Uh, but yeah, still still just waiting on that Warsong Commander, and uh, this is giving Powder a lot of time. I wonder if we ever reach the point where he starts pinging himself in his, in his own face here. It'd be interesting. Does he have Frostbolts? Because he can Frostbolt himself too. Uh, usually they don't play any Frostbolts or Fireballs. Um, and hmm. again, like all my knowledge here is based on what I've seen Nevs play, so other people might have dramatically different lists, but... You know, Nevs is the is the the giant mage player. So my information is coming off what I see him play, and he uh, usually does not play any sort of burn in the deck at all. That's a flame strike. So a re really important draw for um, for powder. And the secret there is a duplicate to go along with the ice block. As we know, they seem to be the only two secrets in the deck. So he now has to uh, have a think about what minion he wants to throw out to be duplicated here. I mean, Sylvanas is not. Not really that great either. It's not, no. Unless you can get like a low health Sylvanas on the board that kind of works as a, a stopper for the burst turn because it will just die to the whirlwind effects and you can potentially steal the frothing berserker. Mm -hmm. um, so you can yeah. ping it each turn? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. That seems to be uh, pretty slow to me. 
Um, so honestly, I feel like duplicating heal bots might be a better idea. But the other problem here is he's going to start burning cards. Because he is at nine cards in hand right now. And if the duplicate goes off, he's gonna he's only going to get one copy of the minion. And then he's going to burn his next card. So he needs to play out something else from his hand here. And even if he plays only one more card, he's still going to burn a card next turn. Yep. That's a really good point. And <laughs> that's something... W what you basically will do when you're not experienced with the deck. There are many, many mistakes you can do just yeah. by not having enough experience All with right. that kind of not intuitive decks. So, we have seen the Warsong Commander be drawn. So we are fast approaching party time here for RDU. He just has to make the decision now about how he's going to go about finishing this game. Are we going to try and kill him through two ice blocks or are we going for the fatigue strategy? This, I is, mean... this is really the breaking point now. I think you should go for the uh, fatigue line, right? There's no way he can break the ice right now, put him down to one, and then win the game after he saw so many cards being drawn from Powder. There has to be at least one Molten Giant and a heal bot. And when that hits the board with an Echo of Medivh, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think you have a way to win after that, right? Yeah, and you know the cards are cheap as well, so you can imagine the possibilities of like him being able to replay Ice Block and Echo of Medivh and play a bunch of Boltons and Sun Fury. You know that that could all be very possible. Mm -hmm. um, Is there a reason why wouldn't you use Execute on the Sylvanas before you played the Unstable Ghoul? I think he's just all in on the Executes for Molten Giants. I think. But, Maybe. Uh, as I we think... said before, the, the Molten Giants, there will be 20 of them, so but, <laughs> there's yeah. no reason to save them, right? Yeah, I agree with you, but, um, you know, until you've been in that situation, honestly, like, this, for all we know, this could be the first game that RDU has ever played of Patron against Echo Mage. That's also true. Um, so he just might be trying to just make intuitive decisions about, you know, how the matchup should play out as time goes on, and that's not the easiest thing to do if you don't have experience with it. Okay. Well, this match will be going for another 20 minutes. Most likely. It's going to be 20 minutes of not an awful lot happening as well. There is going to be a lot of armor pass, ping pass going on here. But um, It's I... like Oskaka versus Surrender last time, right? Right. They were hero powering every single turn yeah. before anything happened, and that took like two hours. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. Um... Just wondering if we can get a quick note from production about how many cards each player has left in their deck, because that is very relevant. Yeah. Yes. That would be very relevant right now. I don't think Power will use any kind of card draw apart from... Wait, did he? I think he might have used one Arcane Intellect. I'm not entirely sure, though. I'm trying to remember. I don't think so. Okay, so he will burn one card right now, because... Oh, wow, that's a yeah, really good thing. Yeah, okay, I like this. I like this. Oh wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I like this a lot. So we are we are now definitely 100% certain that RDU is going down the fatigue path. Yeah. Wouldn't you use the uh, like additional damage to ping the Acolyte right now to to burn more cards? Uh, like, or is the win so important? I, I, I think you can hold it because at the same time. I mean, how is the mage going to prevent this Acolyte from drawing cards, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, we got the note. Uh, okay. From the production, so the warrior they... was an eight and mm -hmm. mage at eight, but I think that was before the acolyte was being. Uh, no, there's no difference. The acolyte didn't yeah, draw. It hasn't yeah, so it's eight eight. But it does mean that by giving powder the acolyte on that turn, RDU has put himself ahead in the fatigue race because this acolyte will draw some cards unless um, powder chooses to polymorph it himself, and if if he even plays a second copy of polymorph in his deck, which is not a certainty. Um. So yeah, he's uh, he's in trouble here. This is a really, really strong play from RDU. Because um, it also denies things like Echo of Medivh to an extent. Like You don't want to be echoing extra uh, acolytes to be filling up your hand, especially when you're having such a problem with a large hand size anyway. Mm -hmm. Second Frothing Berserker comes into hand. Wow. <laughs> what would you give for a hero power that deals one damage right now? Then you can ping the Acolyte of Pain three times. Yep. And be like super happy about it. Should have first put, time. Yeah, should have put this sideshow <laughs> spell stealer in his deck, right? The the six mana six five, copy your opponent's hero, hero power, start pinging away at the Acolyte of Pain. Oh, that would be like thinking out of the box, man. Yeah. 
Uh, ooh, interesting. Looks like we're going for uh, for Warsong turn here. Uh, uh, so is he going for patrons right now with Ansebugoi? He's gonna okay. He's gonna do his armor turn here and then use the whirlwind effects to draw three cards off the accolade. I like this. This this gets two things done. One, it puts him way way ahead in the fatigue race, and two, it nets him a, a ton of armor, so he has the survivability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so yeah, this looks like a really solid use of his resources because he knows once he draws the second frothing berserk. Oh, one molten giant is burned. Yep. So there's the three cards gone from the Acolyte. We see a Frost Nova, a Molten Giant, and I didn't see what the first card was that got burned. What's even funnier, he will not even attack into anything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, into his hero. There's no point in attacking nope. his hero. Just clears the minion that gets stolen, works out perfectly for him as the Armorsmith, and there goes... Oh, both Doomsayers have been burned now. So RDU has absolute perfect knowledge that there are no Doomsayers in Powder's hand. That's absolutely huge. Yep. But... Two flame strikers are there. They are. At the same time, um, Powder is now, I think, four cards deeper than RTU into the deck. Yep. Um, so the onus is on him to do something here, and without with one of his molten giants getting burned, I don't think he can generate enough power on the board to you know, activate the the OTK on the turn. You know, quote unquote OTK. Just get as many Molens on the board as you can and then hit them in the face next turn. It's not really an OTK, but you get the idea. You said that this is the worst, absolutely worst yep. matchup for Patron. Yep. And RDU seems to be pulling it off right now. It really does. It's I struggle to see a route in this game where Powder wins it from this point. Uh, the second Molten being one of the cards that got burned was absolutely huge. Um, with seven cards left in the deck at that point, I think, uh, he was about 50-50 to burn it. Um... So pretty good odds that he was going to burn a Molten Giant if there was one left in the deck, but absolutely huge for him that it did end up going down. Still a problem for RTU because the, the anti-kill bots will make a huge difference in the Fatigue game. They will, but when you're three or four cards ahead, honestly, healing for 16 just isn't that relevant. Um, you know, you've already taken, what, 10 Fatigue damage before your opponent starts fatiguing at all. So, you know, 16 points of healing, even with the extra echoes adding more, I don't think he's going to be overly concerned about it. Mm hmm mm hmm We can see. I mean, this... I definitely think RDU is ahead here, but if Powder is able to navigate this perfectly and, like, his fatigue maths is really on point, it can definitely still happen. Um... He can still have that frost giant you were mentioning. Yeah, um, but it's it's starting to get less and less likely, right? Unless it is just buried in the bottom of the deck. But that might happen. It might. Like like two Warson commanders in the last two cards. Yeah, that also happens. Yep. a lot of time actually. Maybe not the last two, but I saw many times that both Warson commanders were in last four. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that he is he's definitely looking to play a card this turn, so there are definitely cards left in his deck that he cares about drawing. Uh, so maybe that does suggest that the Frost Giant is in there somewhere. I mean, that's, uh, it's a huge leap right now with uh, Vaz being, being the Cassus here because he might not be running that at all. Right, but at, <laughs> at the same time, this, this game is kind of just like, it looks like it's petering out to an inevitable conclusion, and the Frost Giant is just about the only thing that can possibly change that. Um, so that is kind of the, the talking point of the match, really. It's like, if that is in his deck somewhere, he maybe still has a chance. If not, he, it looks like he's struggling. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Alex Traza mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. But there's the um, Execute. Majors one card, Warriors left with three. Hmm. Yep. <sighs> It's just a matter of, uh, I mean, he's kind of forced to use a Whirlwind here. I think he'd much rather have an Inner Rage to use to, to prop the Execute, because the, the Whirlwinds just have so much more overall utility for your deck. Um, but that's why it's going to come down here. He's going to clear out the Heal Bot, uh, which I like, before any more Echo or Duplicate nonsense can happen. And then, I mean, he's there's no way he's considering leaving this alive, right? No, 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 there's no way. Eight damage to the face when Fatigue is hitting really close, like, really really fast there's no way mm -hmm. unless no no no, no. even with an unstable ghoul in hand that would be really bad mm -hmm. um so i think he ha he has to kill it and you know there's one echo of medivh 
still in the deck. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you if you don't kill that Alexstrasza, that Alexstrasza is basically like two heal bots. Right. For sure. So yeah, we do see the whirlwind execute come down at the last minute. He may have just been using every second of his turn there to really like do some maths on fatigue. Um, because at this point, you know, you might as well use every second available to you, because this is kind of a very complex equation. I mean, anyone, people on ladder who've just run into the situation where both decks are just out of cards and, you know, you both have two or three cards left, you, you, you'll know that it's kind of tricky to, like, work out which one of you has won, because there is an inevitable conclusion at that point. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, RDU mm -hmm. might just be taking that opportunity here just to try and work out as many permutations as he can and try and see if he's winning the game from this point. By the way, there's a Frost Giant. There is no Frost Giant. You are right. Yeah. In the meantime, someone later played 300 games of Face Hunter yeah. instead of watching this. <laughs> okay. So can we do 30 damage this turn? It has to be precisely 30 damage. Uh, I mean... Um, go. Lothar, go. Three, <laughs> four, eight, and... What, two wins effect. So, it's, um, you have two minions. One Frozen Berserker will be around 20. Okay. Hmm. Can you play two? I mean, well, this is really a hard turn. He's going for it. This is it. I mean, if he whiffs here, if he does, um, if he, do, if he doesn't have enough, then this could just be the game. It looks like he's going to go for it, and we'll see what he comes up with. It. I mean, you have to also see how much damage does the Berserker have before the attack. Right. And the rope is going to put him on a pretty serious clock here. He does have patron spawn animations to worry about as well. Looks decent, just from what I'm looking at so far. It looks it, reasonable. Ooh. Oh. It has to be exactly 30, so... Yeah. 11. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's not it. That's nope. two. It's one oh, off. Oh, wow. One it's off. one off. Oh, that's horrible for you. Okay. So now, do one, we have oh, a way wait, back wait. into... Did he have a way to, to deal one more damage? Uh, Was there a way? Yeah. Uh, he could have played the Wewind to deal a lot more damage with the Frothing Berserker would have been an even... No. No. You... That would have been an odd number of damage if you would have used that before attacking into the Sun Fury Protector, right? Right. Uh, hmm. It's hard to say. I mean, we. I mean, that was so complicated. Yeah, we'd we'd need a maths professor to sit down and work this one out for us. And even now, like from Powder's perspective, he has a very complicated turn here because he needs to stay alive. He needs to play Healbot, and he also needs to clear this board, like just as a bare minimum. Um, it looks like. No, he can't. Clear. No, he can't clear using the sheep. No, 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 no. You have to use. I mean, if he flame strikes, he's dead because he can't play the heal bot. Hmm. This will only leave six damage on board, and he'll heal up to nine, and then taunt up the two minions on board. Yeah, okay, this is fine. This is fine. I'm happy with this. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It leaves the two patrons at one as well, so um, there's there's no danger of them being respawned. You have to kill the heal bot instantly. Yep. You know, there's one Echo of Medivh left, and there are no more Giants also. Mm -hmm. But you're left with your Frozen Berserk, and there's a minion that will be hitting your face. But hmm. Yeah, just just going back to the Frost Giant point, imagine if he had a zero mana Frost Giant to play that turn as well. Suddenly, the game seems a lot better for him, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Second Hillbot has to be played now, and then Echo of Medivh. Uh, I think Flame Strike gets played this turn, yeah. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, never mind me. What I'm talking even about. Mm -hmm. And then the Healbot Echo happens next turn. I, I think he's still losing on Fatigue. Is he? Are you sure of that? 
Are you be going he's into fatigue so right now? Three far damage. ahead. Yeah, he's that's so three. Far ahead on the fatigue. Four damage next turn. He's at twelve, so that's eight. Yeah. And he will get additional heal bot. And he has the minions on board attacking. That's really relevant as well, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, this is close. Yeah, he, this is close. I think I think Ardu will be losing this. There's no card he can play. Nope. Absolutely none. And, and there's still one heal bot. Yeah, he's just taking seven a turn from minions. It takes ten again next turn. Yeah, I think Powder's one, right? Mm-hmm. Powder has one. Wow. So there you go. Worst matchup in the game, like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, for RTU to win this matchup, mm. I would think it would require quite a lot of experience of this matchup because he was like kind of nailing him down when it comes to the Fury, right? Yeah. But the practice in the last 75 seconds. Yeah. That really mattered. Yeah, is the most important because you have to deal exactly the the health. You have to deal exactly the damage of wow. your opponent's health minus look, one. Sorry, but just look at the difference in expressions right now. Like Powder, absolutely over the moon, sitting back in his chair, relieved. RDU cannot believe he's lost that game. Like absolutely mm -hmm. soul destroying. Mm -hmm. You've just grinded a game out for like 30 minutes. Yeah, and it ended up a loss. Wow. Ugh. RDU is, RDU is going to have to like pick himself up off the ground now and really try and put himself back together. And uh, we just see on our view, uh, we know you guys on the stream didn't quite catch it, but RDU has just got up and left his chair briefly, probably just gone to recompose himself and get his okay. head back in the game. So. I mean, he lost uh, he lost a matchup that was, wasn't really favoring him, but give, uh, having here a win would be so crushing for Powder. Right. So uh, that, will have, that will mean not only that he's leading to O, but also the fact that Powder will be losing like his best matchup, mm -hmm. and that might tilt Powder. Because Powder is kind of known for being like a really emotional player, mm -hmm. so I would say that that might affect his uh, ability to play the next games. Uh, but in this situation, he's on Steam, I would say, and he's looking forward to the next match. And in the opposite for Adiu, I mean, Adi, when I talk about Adiu about his mindset, he always. He was working, uh, working on improving his uh, ability to get up from a loss. You know, okay, to get, to get back right. on his, after a loss because mm -hmm. he's an emotion player too, and such games like, like the, the one that we just saw, is is it's really uh, affects your mind. And um, I'm sure that he's now just doing something to to get back into the ground level mindset to be like you know on the ground level known to be like uh, prepared for the next match. Yeah, absolutely. And he's still taking some time out, so we have uh, a little bit of, of time to fill here. What do we have left in terms of the matchups? Um, mm. So Powder has won with his Mage, and RDU has won with his Druid. Uh, Druid, yes. Yeah, so so was... we have Paladin Warrior left against Priest Hunter. That mm -hmm. seems to line up pretty well for RDU. Um, maybe the Hunter is running a copy of Flare. I would find that unlikely. I don't think Flare is a particularly good card, but... Um, what about um, Paladin versus Dragon Priest matchup? Yeah, I think that is the one favoured matchup that Powder does have here. So he's definitely the one that he's going to be looking to queue into if he can. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go with the Priest here. And it certainly looks like he is. And we do, in fact, pick up the Priest versus Paladin matchup. So, uh... Powder may, maybe winning the battle of mind games a little bit there, picking up the favorable matchup for himself in what looked like a pretty unfavored situation. Yep. But there's the Doctor Six already in hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, never uh, mind. That's that's too many Doctor Sixes to have in your opening hand. Unless he will not draw a single secret before turn six. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the uh, keeping? Uh, Mysterious Challenger in your opening hand. Like Did he keep it? Uh, no, I just as a general point, would you ever keep it in your opening hand? Yes, when I'm going second. When you're going second, okay. An example against a Druid, um, against Patron Warriors. Mm -hmm. Those are the important matchups for me. Okay. It's just an interesting point because like, the player base is really, really split on it. A lot of people adamantly believe you should keep it, and a lot of people adamantly believe that you should just go for your early game. Um, so yeah, just interested in what your thoughts on that were. But Powder off to a fairly slow start here with the cleric, um, and he doesn't have a dragon. Also for the Vimrus agent. Yeah, which is why we see the uh, the heal play being taken this turn, trying to dig for a dragon. But unfortunately, he just gets another card requiring a dragon. 
Um, oh, he did. He didn't hit the um, cleric for one. Didn't, which means he now loses his knife juggler for free. Uh, still no dragon in hand. I would favor playing the three four on board right now, even though you do need to dig for the dragon. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. You you can do that. If if your opponent has a truce of a champion, you basically lose your whole board to nothing. <sighs> I I know. Mm. But like heal pass, you're losing your whole board to true silver anyway, right? Like but, against yeah, but... against the other twenty eight cards in the Paladin's deck, it's better to play Dark Cultist. Hmm. Yeah, okay, you're right. But um, it's a, that feels horrible. Yeah, I mean it's worked out absolutely horribly, but it's you know it's sometimes easy to get caught in the blinders of like we see he has the true silver, but he doesn't have to have it. And against just, you know, developing a couple of minions, maybe playing Muster for Battle or something like that, you'd rather have the extra minion on board, for sure. Yeah. That's why, in this situation, uh, if you would have, of course, a dragon in hand, the um, the Blackwing Technician would be so superior. Mm -hmm. So much better. Yep, absolutely. Sometimes there is merit to having that extra health. But uh... Uh -huh. And look at that, how much information Ardu now has. There's no dragon in his hand. Yep. So you can be sure that there will be... An one of those. Holy Novas, Light Bombs, mm -hmm. uh, Cabal Shadow Priest, Vol'jin, um, Black and Corruptors. What else? Valence Chosen? Probably not because it would be already played. Yeah, and also it lets him play out this Pilot Shredder with almost complete confidence that he's not going to get Blackwing Corrupted on curve because he knows there's no dragon mm -hmm, in the hand to mm -hmm. activate it. Yeah, um, so yeah really like, well executed. Yeah, like you said, a lot of uh, a lot of information being given away by the playing the one four from his hand there, which makes you question whether it was even worth playing it in the first place. Wow, that redemption value though. Powder just shakes his head, and I guess he's really just—is he really just going to play a five four <laughs> to trade with a four one pilot shredder that was revived off a one mana secret? The anti-value of the play that just happened right now would actually wow. trump pass out. It would be really perfect for RDU without the sec secret draw right now. Mm -hmm. Any card other than a secret would have been perfect game for RDU right now. Yep. And I think we'll see RDU trade with the actual succubus here. As strange as it looks. So? Yeah. Why? Light bomb. Okay, good point. I mean, does it make a difference? Yeah, because now um, he gets, like, if Light Bomb clears, he gets an uh, Avenged Redeemed Haunted Creeper, which is way, way better. Like, look, look, look at the board he's left with now. Okay, yeah, 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 right. After Definitely. the Light Bomb, compared to what he would have had before. Wait, there's no Redemption. Yeah, there is. Oh, no, there's... oh, no, there isn't. No, no, there was no. He's only playing one Redemption. No, there was no Redemption at all. He's only playing one Redemption. No, there's no Redemption. No, but one redemption has already gone off with the pilot shredder. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so he's only playing yeah, yeah, yeah. his deck. So he's playing re Repentance. Yeah. And possibly double competitive spirit as well. Mm, do you think so? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how many secrets he wants to go for, but um, the the single redemption is kind of surprising to me. But yeah, like, he, look at this board. <laughs> <laughs> How the light bomb last turn? And look at the board that he's facing down. It's absolutely ridiculous. Just abs there's just there's just no way out here. This is just game. Let's just concede and move on. Yep. Absolutely crushed. Well, that was a fast game. That was like totally I don't know, 180 different from the game we just saw with uh patron versus freeze uh freeze echo mage. Because that was a resident sleeper match and this was like a smoke match. Totally the opposite. Yep, and it's precisely what RDU needed, right? He needed to just get that quick win under his belt, get back on the board. Suddenly, all those bad feelings from the patron game are gone, and he's back on the board. He's 2-1 mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. and he now gets to queue his patron warrior into uh, Dragon Priest and the uh, Hunter from, from Powder. So he is favored in both of these matchups, regardless of the build of the Hunter. So Do you think so? I'm not exactly favoring... Um... Patron against Midrange Hunter. I, I think Patron still wins that matchup. I think barely. I think it's like a 55-45 type of thing, but I think Patron Warrior is, is slightly favored. Um, okay. I just I just think the early minions are just too much of a hassle. If you get like Armor Smiths and Unstable Ghouls and Acolytes, they're just way too annoying for the Hunter to deal with, and you can just spiral from there with Battle Rages, and it just gets out of control. But first things first, we're going to have to deal with uh, Patron Warrior versus Dragon Priest. 
Um, and dragon... that's, again, not a good opening hand for it's powders. Absolutely not. Uh, the Dragon Priest needs to look to be proactive in this matchup because they don't really play the, the stalling techniques like uh, yeah. like Light Bomb and, and Justicar and stuff like that to, to really, like, um, you know, play the control game against patrons. So they really do have to try and be proactive and put the patron on a clock. Uh, and basically, the, you want to do the druid things. Yeah, you want to make minions hit him to the face. Right, and then not have the savage roar to back it up, which is uh, why this yeah. matchup is pretty miserable for the priest because it takes them way too long to actually get the get the killing thing done. But shadow of pain on an acolyte of pain is a pretty decent start. Hmm. <sighs> Still, that hand though is not looking pretty it starts to go places on turn six and then it goes places pretty quickly but i would suggest that might just be a little bit too slow hmm oh there's there's a minion for the valence chosen <laughs> yeah it's not that bad it's not that bad you can play the power shields too and the valence chosen at the same time but mm -hmm. would you do that there's, there might be a looming execute though Right, but maybe looking at your hand, you're okay with th this thing getting executed? If you have Dr. Boom and Ysera to follow it up quite rapidly in a couple of turns. Looks like he's going to go for it, and I don't blame him. So... RDU, looks like he's just going to proc the execute with his yeah, Smith. He has to do it, right? Yeah, he has the opportunity of using the uh, the Battle Rage if he wants to. Uh, sorry, the Inner Rage to proc the execute, but it's like he's going to use the Inner Rage to cycle his Acolyte. Gain one more armor from that. Hmm. Well, that was the Patron and Wilson Commander already, but you're missing now your AoE effects. Your patron, I mean, sorry, your Acolyte of Pain will at least draw one more card. Because mm -hmm. he cannot be cabaled. Yep. Hmm. Um, but, you know, Powder is starting to draw into uh, some of his more aggressive plays here to go along with the, the the amount of late game he drew in his hand early, which he obviously didn't want to see. But, you know, he's, he's got a reasonable curve here of Azia Drake into Dr. Boom, and then we'll just be looking to see where the game goes from there. But... Powder probably isn't feeling too great about this this game right now. Um, the one blessing for him is that RDU does not have any weapons in his hand, and weapons are the absolute thing that you want to see against Priest, because they just they just buy you so much time. If you can keep the board clear, you know you have all the time in the world, because Priest isn't going to mm -hmm, kill you mm -hmm. without a board. Um, so weapons are like the best stalling technique in the deck for the warrior, um, and RDU is just kind of missing them right now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we're gonna see a three card battle rage here. We are. All right. I kind of like this. This is fine. He gets the full three card draw of his acolyte. He draws another three cards uh, with his battle rage, and then um, he gets to pick off the Drake with a nice clean trade. Um, so pretty progressive turn there from RDU. Speeds up the game a little bit and uh, fills up his hand with a pretty juicy looking Emperor hand if he can pull the Emperor off the top at some point. Hmm. And it, I'm just thinking, when will the Cabal Shadow Priest now matter in this matchup? Because there will probably be no, no more targets for it, unless there will be a uh, Warzone Commander will be le uh, will be left on board. Mm -hmm. Afterward, uh, after the turn when there is no lethal, but I, I guess Ardy will be playing for lethal. Like against uh, the Dragon Priest, which is really slow right now. Mm -hmm. hmm. Really interesting game. I mean, maybe turns to the side because. All right, RDU is going to choose to just use one of his Warsong patron combos here. Um, that's fine. He has the second Warsong in his hand. Um, so using this to, to tidy up the board seems pretty reasonable. We'll see what happens with the boom bots. It kills the Warson Commander. Kills the Warson. Oh. Okay. I mean, it's fine. The, the patron that was just spawned still gets to attack. Mm -hmm. So he basically just ends up missing three damage to face, which is, is kind of fine. <laughs> also interesting that now it can be Cabaled. It can't be Cabaled? Yeah. He, uh, I mean, um, oh, Powder it's can, yeah, can take the Warson Commander to, yeah. his, to his side. Yeah, absolutely. That would make a huge difference for the Twilight Guardian. Hello, that's a board clear. Yep. 
That's a good draw. It is. And there's no, uh, no way that RDU can now make board control easily because there's no second patron in hand at all. Yep. Uh, he does most importantly dove, uh, have the second execute for this uh, this 911 that's on board this right now. This monstrosity. It right. does need to be dealt with pretty rapidly. So yeah, slam execute seems like the first port of call here. He'll probably cycle. Yeah, going to pick up the second slam and cycle that as well. Because uh, he's just digging for... Uh, oh. Problems. One month short to even go for the third cycle. Yeah, that's slightly annoying. Uh, he's ju but he's just trying to dig really, really hard here. Still both frothings in the deck and still emperor in the deck. So um, and one battle rage left. Yeah. Right. Uh, so looks like Ysera time, and this Ysera is more or less immortal at this point. Uh, both executes are gone, and there is no way this thing will be get killed with damage. With and he gets a zero awakens. Yeah. Uh, with one Warsong commander gone, the only way you'd ever see the Cicera killed with damage is with a Warsong, you know, Warsong Frothing or Warsong Patron combo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, RDU literally just can't afford to do that anymore. Yeah, the second Adi. Warsong has to kill him. He just might have enough damage to kill him next turn. It looks like it, yeah. Unless uh, RDU can, I'm sorry, unless Powder can put up a significant wall of taunts here, because uh... I mean, one one Twilight Garden is not enough, and you use both forward shields and one villain's chosen. Yeah. He can draw two more cards. Uh, but that's not a taunt, and that's it. That's could, basically game. Yeah, I, I kind of disagree with his uh, card draw ordering there, because he could have immediately drawn two cards for four mana by attacking and playing double cleric and healing. It, yes, it does that would be my kind of play too. It does fill the board more for the eventual frothing burst, but you know, it doesn't matter how small or big your board is unless you draw a taunt. So first things first, draw a taunt as cheaply as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he could have drawn, with the six mana left over, he could have drawn exactly Twilight Guardian Wormrest Agent. And then maybe for all, all he knows, that keeps him alive. True. I would do the same. So definitely um, could have been played differently by Powder in this situation, but probably wouldn't save him anyway. So yeah, the, uh, the brief break that uh, RDU took after that uh, epic uh, freeze, uh, sorry, Molten's Mage, Echo Mage game, it mm -hmm. certainly seemed to have worked. He's come back and just tidied up these last two games incredibly efficiently, and he will uh, join the other two players that you've seen win so far in the next round of our tournament. Yeah, and RDU goes to the round of eight, because this is a single elimination bracket. So everyone that's uh, winning the game is going forward, of course, but everyone that is losing the game is out of the tournament. So not a good showing for Powder, unfortunately. Uh, it was... Uh, First time for a long time that we had seen him and unfortunately didn't go his way. 3-1 for RDU. Uh, we'll be seeing the match next match, which is Kaldi versus Fontap. And this will be happening in a few minutes. Now we're going to a small break, five minutes I suppose, in the ABS Grand Tournament. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 